Hello, hello. Welcome back to another episode of A Dose of Sass. It's Caitlin, otherwise known as Sass and Cellulite. I don't know who else it would be. I don't know who you're expecting. It's just me. (laughs) I'm so excited about what I'm going to talk about today. And that is like my most viral moments on the internet. (laughs) Um, Kind of. It's not about like virality on the internet, but it is about two different moments that I've gone viral and the conversations surrounding them because they're very important to my online platform and like everything that I'm about. So a little story time. Back in the year of our Lord 2021, I got on TikTok. I was already like a year late at this point. (laughs) Most people got on TikTok in 2020 because we were all bored. I tried to hold off as long as possible. I finally got on TikTok and I started dabbling in video content. Up to this point, I'd never posted video content. So I was being experimental and it was kind of nice because I was like, okay, nobody knows. I mean, like, yes, I had I had a very small Instagram, but in case this video content thing doesn't go well, I'm just gonna, like, nobody has to know I have a TikTok, right? <laughs> so fall of 2021, I started a series called Is It a Cute Pose or Is She Just Skinny? Where I was taking poses that I found on Pinterest or the internet or somebody else's Instagram and trying them on my size 16 body. I was not the first person to create this concept. I had seen variations of this on the internet. Is it a fit or is she just skinny? Is it a fit or is it just Bella Hadid? <laughs> you know, showing this Pinterest outfit on my body type, etc. This is not a new concept. But I started doing it on my page and I started to go viral for it. And I had one video that really popped off on TikTok. And, and because video content hadn't started on Instagram yet, so IG Reels was not a thing yet like had literally had not been introduced i had just taken the photos that were the result of trying this pose and posted the photos on instagram and both the video on tiktok and the photos on instagram both went viral at the same time like insanely i'm talking 60 million views on instagram for a static photo unreal and i and like a couple million views on tiktok as well absolutely wild. Both of my pages saw a huge follower increase overnight. (laughs) That was wild. Um, On Instagram, I actually didn't keep a majority of my followers because I'm very careful. And I do I do this every every once in a while, I do clean out my followers because sometimes I get an influx of like creepy men, or just like spam accounts. So I do clean out my Instagram followers pretty frequently because I don't want thousands of men interacting with my page (laughs) but it's harder to do on tiktok so i wasn't able to clean them out on tiktok but both both pages saw a large increase and i continued doing this trend for a while however anytime i posted a series is it a cute pose or is she just skinny people always come out of the woodwork saying that's an offensive title so let's get into it so the title is it a cute pose or is it a cute outfit or is she just skinny always gets the same kind of responses. And there's a variety of them. First and foremost, we get the people that are like, that is body shaming. That is skinny shaming. Or is she just skinny is so rude. What if we flip the script and we said, is it a cute outfit or is she just fat? You would never hear that because that's not, you know, because that's so rude. So why would you use the word skinny in the same way? And I'm going to stop you right there. (laughs) Skinny shaming and fat shaming are not the same thing. And let me explain why. First and foremost, body shaming of any kind, not allowed. Not okay, shouldn't happen. Skinny shaming differs from fat shaming in the fact that one of them is a personal attack and one of them is systemic oppression. You can't equate someone being told you're too skinny to someone being denied healthcare because of the size of their body. To lack of access to public spaces, to denial of job opportunities. Now, I'm not saying that skinny shaming doesn't affect people. Of course it does. And it's not okay. But affecting someone's body image or mental health is not the same as someone being denied health care because they're in a larger body. There are too many stories of fat people going into their doctor for an earache a stomach ache, something obvious and being absolutely ignored and told, lose weight before you come back. Lose weight before you can get fertility treatment. Lose weight before you can get dental treatment. Those kind of situations are not the same as skinny shaming. 
Because no matter how much someone in a smaller body hears an insult, they are still represented in every form of media. They are still the blueprint of society. Skinny shaming is an exception to the norm, whereas fat shaming is a norm. Nobody ever says, and here's another difference, nobody ever says, I want to be fat. Everyone always says, I want to be skinny. Which word do you think is used more likely in a positive context? I'll tell you, it's not the word fat. Which one is used more likely in an offensive context? It's not the word skinny. So if you're saying, oh, what if we flip the script and said, is it a cute fit or is she just fat? Nobody would say that because nobody wants to be fat. Nobody strives for that in our society because it's shamed, because it's looked down upon. But no matter what, when somebody loses weight for whatever reason at all, it's praised. When somebody gains weight for whatever reason at all, I'm talking about like in the public eye or even just peer to peer, weight gain is villainized and weight loss is praised. So regardless of personal affliction, the societal impression is not the same. They cannot be equated to each other. So let's just take that one off the table. Nobody's, nobody's going to start a series called Is It a Cute Fit or Is She Just Fat? Except somebody did. <laughs> somebody did. There's a creator called Coco Moco on TikTok who at the same time started a series called Is It a Fit or Is She Just Fat? Which doesn't make a lot of sense because nobody is looking at fat people and going, wow, I wish I could wear that. See the difference? Also. The person who started this series is not fat. She wears a size large. She might have some curves. And that was her, that was her whole like tagline for her video series was because curves make everything look better. Okay. That's not the same thing as being fat. There's a reason why plus size models still have a flat tummy and an hourglass shape most of the time, because that's still the desirable, desirable body type. So that series just didn't even make sense, but somebody did try to do it. <laughs> So that one, let's check that one off. The other thing is the main reason I kept saying this title over and over again, I understand that it sounds like I'm implying the outfit is only cute because it's on a skinny body. She's only cute because she's skinny. I know that's what the title implies. It's a video hook. It's a catchy headline on purpose. It's not that serious. <laughs> the reason I have used that phrase as a title, and actually I'll be changing it and I'll explain that in a little bit. The reason I've used that phrase as a title is because that is the question that if you live in a curvy body, a fat body, plus size body, any body that's not the societal norm, you have asked yourself that question in your head. When scrolling Pinterest, when flipping through a magazine, when watching TV, you have probably thought to yourself, is that a cute outfit or is it just because she's skinny? Because if I tried to wear that, it wouldn't look the same. And if you've ever asked yourself that question in your head, or thought to yourself, I could never wear that because my body doesn't look like that. That's who this series is for. To show my size 16, 18 body with a belly and a booty, doing poses, wearing outfits, and trying styles that you don't often see represented in my body type. Especially on Pinterest. And that's where most of this inspiration came from, is Pinterest poses and Pinterest photos and Pinterest outfits. Because Pinterest is an aspirational platform. It is full of models of smaller influencers. And here's the other comment that I often got is like, if that's what your Pinterest feed looks like, then that's your algorithm. Like, don't you know, it's curated to show you what you want to see. However, Pinterest, like any social media platform, has a majority thin white creators. If you are plus size, a person of color, a disabled person, anything else than thin and white, you're going to have to work twice as hard for your content to be seen on any social media platform, Pinterest included. So yes, while my algor Pinterest algorithm might be skewed to show me certain things because that's the things that I've saved, because those are the things that I go, someone's going to want to know how that looks on my body. I still would have to search for it. I, I one time did a search Another thing that people use Pinterest for is for like drawing, um, drawing references if people like sketch and things like that. And if you look up fat model on Pinterest, the search results are not fat models. They are weight loss recommendations. They are before and afters. That is the algorithm that we're working with. 
So not just a, oh, well, then you've obviously searched for that. No, that's what the site is made up for. Now, I will say that Pinterest has made strides since 2021 in body diversity, racial diversity, inclusion. You can now, actually, this is really cool. You can now filter searches by your body type. So if you're looking up like summer outfits, you can actually filter by your body size. Similar how Old Navy does this. Um, you can like shop by someone in your size. So all of the outfit images will be the, the items shown on your size. Super cool. So Pinterest has made strides better than any other social media platform in its diversity efforts. However, what do people primarily use Pinterest for? Inspiration, aspiration, future goals. So they're going to save things. There's, a, there's just thousands of Pinterest boards that are, that are titled things like outfits I'll wear when I'm skinny, outfits I'll wear after I lose weight. That's how I know that nobody's going, outfits I'll wear when I'm fat. <laughs> nobody's saying that because skinny is the thing that's strived for. So what I've aimed to do with showing Pinterest outfits and Pinterest poses on my body is to break that question of, I can't wear this until I lose weight, until I'm a certain size, because that's not true. And, and another comment that comes up when I say this is people go, well, then why can't you why can't you just show the inspiration without having to put down the other body size in the process? And to that, I say, again, it's social media. I have three seconds to get your attention before you scroll past me. I'm going to go with the catchy headline. And if you stick around for more than three seconds, my next sentence is, by the way, this is not about comparison. This is about representation, because when you look up outfits or poses on Pinterest, you're not going to see my body type. So let me show you so that you don't have to wonder. But people just hear the word skinny and go, that's body shaming. That's rude. Don't say that. When I didn't even say skinny was a bad word in the first place. I don't even say it in the rest of the videos ever. <laughs> it's just the title. Moving forward, I actually am renaming this series. Not because I don't want to use that word, but because I want it to encompass a little bit more. So I'm go going forward, I'm going to be calling the series Plus Size Pinterest. And then the second tagline after that is the series where I share outfit and posing inspiration from Pinterest on a size 16, 18 body so that you don't have to wonder what it looks like. So it's a little bit more encompassing of outfits and poses, photo shoot recreations, because no matter what size you're in, you are worthy of being Pinterest inspiration. You are worthy of being the Pinterest aesthetic. Because that, that's the other thing that comes up in these comments that I find super interesting is people go, well, it's not about body size. It's about confidence. It's about being comfortable in front of the camera. Or sometimes it's about like mobility and flexibility, depending on how crazy the pose is. And it's true. Nine times out of 10, it's not the fact that the outfit looks cuter on the smaller body or the pose looks cuter on the smaller body. It's that they're doing it with confidence. And when it ends up looking cute on me, it's because I'm doing it with confidence. The pose might even be modified, but you still go, that's cute. And it gives you permission to do it yourself because you're seeing someone like me in a size 16, 18 body show up, take up space with confidence. So that's why I'm renaming my series Plus Size Pinterest, because you have permission to be Pinterest inspo. If you don't see the representation, be the representation. And that's what I'm trying to do. So... That's, that was one of my most viral moments on the internet. I haven't done them in a while, but I, I'm, I'm going to be picking them up soon with this new name. So I want to talk about another viral moment that kind of t piggybacks off of this one. And that is anytime I talk about the word flattering, I don't know what it is about the word flattering, but it gets the internet in a tizzy. <laughs> people have really strong feelings about it. And I understand because I have strong feelings about it as well as some of the others in the plus size community. But people outside of that also have a lot of feelings about it. And something that I've learned from talking about it on the internet is uh, we have different definitions for what that means depending on our experience with said word. So the example I'm going to use is one of my most viral videos to date. I was trying on this green maxi skirt from Target. And a little, back, a little background context for this video 
I had bought this skirt because I planned a video of like how to style it six ways. I love a I love a bright color pop moment. And I had already like picked out all the tops and all the things I was gonna wear with this skirt. And I was I was shooting the video. I want to hear six ways to wear this skirt. And then I tried the skirt on. And mind you, I have another skirt, a very similar material, very similar style from the same brand in the same size that fits me great and I love it. So I'm expecting the same from this skirt. And then I try it on and it's a little bit more form fitting around my belly than I expected it to be. And in that moment, I I put it on for the first time and I was standing in front of the camera when I did it. So this is, you, you got my very initial reaction to it. And I didn't like it on my body because I did, it didn't look how I expected it to. You could see the outline of my belly button. You could see the outline of my belly. There was a shadow under my belly. And in that moment, I sighed. Thoughts that were going on in my head were, gosh darn it, this is not how I expect it to look. And that is not how I thought my stomach looked. And oof, I'm a little thrown off. And in the video, I'm actually pressing on my stomach, trying to envision how it would look if it was a little bit flatter. I know you've probably done that. If you're listening to this podcast and you're a plus size gal, you've probably done this where you've tried to flatten your stomach to see how it would look if you lost a little bit of weight or you try to squeeze your arms a little bit or you try to smooth out your back roll to be like, "Mm, how would this look without that, right? So that's what I'm doing in this video. And then I catch myself. And and the thing, uh, some, some people in the comments were like, wow, you really just like filmed this. I didn't plan to do this in front of the camera. I thought it was going to look really cute. And then I got in front of the camera and it's not what I thought it looked like. And I was caught off guard. And I start to walk out of the frame and I back up and I go, hold on one second. This is a learning opportunity. And I start giving myself out loud some positive body affirmations. Now, this didn't magically fix my body image in the moment. I still returned the skirt. I still didn't wear it. So saying these affirmations didn't magically fix it, but they did get me past this negative spiral moment. So what I said was, this does not ruin the outfit. I'm allowed to wear a form-fitting skirt on a belly. I'm okay with it. And I said those out loud to myself, to the camera, and you can see my demeanor change by the end. By the end, I was able to film the video and call it a day. And I went on to film more content in my day. Because what could, have, what could have happened if I didn't do that is I would have taken the skirt off. I would have probably spiraled even further into a negative body image moment. It may have lasted all day. And I would have gone throughout my day questioning my food choices, my movement choices. That's how body image effect messes with your brain, right? You, you start questioning everything. You go, gosh, well, how am I going to fix this? And instead, I chose to say out loud some positive affirmations. And here's the thing, because some people in the comments of this video, which got like, I want to say like 5 million views on on Instagram, uh, an absurd amount. Some people were like, positive affirmations don't work. Like you can tell that you're, it's not actually okay. You say it's okay, but clearly you don't feel okay. I know. Saying something out loud is powerful for your brain because here's the thing, your brain doesn't know whether it's true or not. Your brain is going to believe what you tell it whether or not it's true. Have you ever heard of like laughter therapy where you like start with a fake laugh and it makes you actually laugh and your body and your brain doesn't know whether you're laughing for real or for not. You're still going to get the same chemical reaction. So if you tell yourself, and it's a, it's a double-edged sword. If you tell yourself, I'm ugly, I'm not worthy of love, I'm stupid, it's going to be a self-fulfilling prophecy you're going to start believing those things. If you tell yourself, I'm smart, I'm beautiful, I'm loved. I'm smart, I'm beautiful, I'm loved. I'm smart, I'm beautiful, I'm loved. Sooner or later, you're going to believe it, even if you didn't believe it the first time you said it. So in this video, I say, I'm allowed to exist. This does not ruin my outfit. I'm allowed to wear a form-fitting skirt on a belly. I'm okay with it. Did I believe it in the moment? No, not at all. But now, the next time I go to wear a form-fitting outfit, I'm going to remember That's right. I'm allowed to wear this. It's okay. It takes practice. Confidence takes practice. And here's the other thing about body image. In that moment, wasn't a fan of my stomach, but that was one moment, one day. I could wear the same form-fitting skirt, another form-fitting dress, the same outfit the next day and feel like a million bucks. Because body image isn't about your body, it's about your brain. So I was in a bad headspace when I took this video, not a bad body. I'm going to say that again. 
I was in a bad headspace, not a bad body. Because even if, listen, even if trying on that skirt made me realize, wow, I want to lose weight. I want to change my body. I want to get rid of my stomach. That wouldn't happen overnight. So I would need to figure out a way to get past that moment and be okay. Because life doesn't start after you lose weight, after you achieve your dream body. You have to, in order to like live your best life, you have to be okay with the body that you exist in. I don't care if you have goals to be in a different one. You're, you, I've said this in previous episodes, you can't hate yourself into a version of yourself that you can love. It's not how it works. So whether I believed them or not, positive affirmations is what got me through the moment. That, that's a little bit about body image. Another thing that happened in this comment section is people would go, well, obviously that skirt's not flattering. So why would you put yourself through? Why would you talk, talk yourself into wearing something that doesn't look good? Why would you talk yourself into something that you don't like? Why would, why don't you just change what you're wearing? Don't wear something. Don't force yourself to wear something that's not flattering. How is that going to be helpful? So let's dive into that argument. <laughs> let's talk about the word flattering. Flattering for majority of people means makes you look good. You look good in it. This could ref- this could refer to how how a color looks on your skin tone, how a shape of a clothing item looks on your body, how something brings out your eye color, your hair color. It can refer to a lot of things, but overall it means you look good. We're not, we're not in disagreement about that. However, flattering is often a term directed towards people in larger bodies as a way to disguise fat phobic language. So people will use the word, wow, that dress is so flattering to mean that dress makes you look skinny. That dress is smoothing out your stomach. Shapewear makes everything more flattering, meaning closer to the beauty standard. And even if you mean the word flattering as just the most neutral compliment, subconsciously, it still means the thing that you're wearing makes you look objectively good to society. So when it's directed towards people in a larger body, that means it makes you look skinnier. There are certain styles that are always marketed towards fat people, such as wearing all black, not wearing horizontal stripes avoiding certain colors. All of those things are more flattering. Don't cut your hair short or else it'll accentuate your round face. Those are rules for people in larger bodies around fashion to help them achieve their most flattering look. And the opposite of that is if someone says, wow, that's not flattering, what they often mean is that makes you look larger. So whether the intention is good, which I believe a lot of people do are well-meaning when they say this word, there's still a general connotation of whether it makes you look larger or smaller, whether it looks you lo- makes you look more like an hourglass or not. Because here's the other thing about the word flattering. If it means that it makes you look good, another, another way people describe it is you look confident, you're glowing. So obviously that piece is flattering on you because you look confident. Then that means flattering is subjective because what somebody wears that makes them feel confident is subjective. So if I'm wearing something that I feel cute and comfy and confident in, then that's gonna be flattering to me. But you might not view it that way. Who decides what is flattering and what is not? So whenever I talk about the word flattering on the internet, I am using it in the context of flattering means it makes you look skinny or it makes you look slimmer, it makes you look closer to the beauty standard. So if I say, hey, this dress might not be flattering, and then people go, what do you mean? It looks great on you. That's not what I said. Yes, I still look cute, but it doesn't necessarily enhance my natural body shape. It doesn't make me look like an hourglass. That's what I'm saying. And here's the thing. You don't owe anybody flattering. You're allowed to wear something that gives you no shape. You don't have to throw a belt on an oversized dress to accentuate your waist if you don't want to, because nobody needs to know. (laughs) Nobody needs to know what your body looks like underneath unless you want them to. You don't owe anybody flattering. You don't owe anybody the smallest version of yourself. Because that's the thing about fat people on the internet is they're okay with you. Generally, the society is okay with you as long as you look like you're trying to not be fat. If you're wearing styles that make you look slimmer, if you're on a weight loss journey, then it's acceptable. And if you're not doing that, if you're saying, hey, it's okay to wear 
shapeless clothing and it's okay to look bigger than you are and it's okay to not be on a weight loss journey then people go that's anti-health you're promoting obesity why wouldn't you want to wear something flattering why would you choose not to look good <laughs> it's not about choosing not to look good it's about choosing what's comfy and confident for an individual and also who says it doesn't look good it's subjective so anyway flattering always ends up being like a weird backhanded compliment or i get to define it myself so back to the green skirt video why would you intentionally wear something that's not flattering if you don't like the skirt then change it flattering is subjective another common comment under this green skirt video was if you don't like it then do something about it if you don't like your stomach showing in the skirt then do something about your stomach that was the other common response and let me tell you that's not how it works because like i said with body image i could wear that skirt tomorrow and feel fantastic in it because body image is not about your body it's about your brain so even if i lost my stomach that doesn't mean that i would magically feel more confident in that skirt losing weight changing your body doesn't magically come with a side of confidence and i know from experience if you're waiting to be confident in your skin until you reach a certain size until you achieve a certain goal weight until you fit into a certain pair of pants that's been in the back of your closet you're gonna keep waiting confidence is not determined by body size value your worth and your value are not determined by your body size you are allowed to be confident no matter what because i hate to break it to you but your body is going to continue to change for the rest of your life probably going to get wrinkles you're probably going to get saggier you might lose weight you might gain weight you might get taller you might get shorter you might have babies you might not our bodies are changing forever so if your confidence is rooted in how you look now or how you want to look in six months you're setting yourself up for a roller coaster of emotions the rest of your life you're setting yourself up to be constantly chasing your current version of happiness your current version of happiness in your body and here's the other thing as i'm no as we're noticing in 2024 is that bodies unfortunately go in and out of style we went from having bbls to heroin chic is back everyone wants to be thin as a rail and wear our 90s and early 2000s styles and in eight ten years we might all be getting bbls again and i say we as in society not myself and that is not only ridiculous unattainable unsustainable and unhealthy but it doesn't guarantee confidence so stop waiting so that's your dose of sass for the day body image isn't about your body confidence isn't about your body you don't owe anybody flattering and you are worthy of being pinterest inspiration i love you so much i'll talk to you soon adios